the, uh, before before we go, I want to talk about your work with uh, Braver Angels, and to just give a a, a, a a brief summary, it's an organization that you're part of, and you guys are trying to foster conversation and and and, and closer ties and relations, um, you know, between black people, white people, uh, conservatives, you know, progressives, all of these, you know, um, sub demographics that we have in, in the United States, mm-hmm. that's really the, the, the work of the organization. So with that summary out of the way, um, my question is, how do you think you're doing? Like, do you, you know, um, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a Herculean task. Yeah. Um, where do you think that is right now in the context of America today? Mm. Well, you're asking me this at a at a fateful sort of moment, uh, I think. Actually, uh, just today, and I, I'll send it to you, uh, we're launching a, a letter to America, which basically is calling upon people uh, to hold firm in the better angels of their nature, uh, to uh, look beyond uh, violence as a means of responding to what could be a constitutional crisis and a contested election where maybe we don't know uh, who or we don't we have disagreement in terms of who the legitimately elected president of the United States is come uh, mm. come election day. Um, we're going to be pushing out this letter for the American people uh, to sign across the country. I mean, from you know from influential folks all the way down to to just uh, you know uh, ordinary folks on on Main Street, and so we should have a, um, a piece and. Uh, in some national media outlets out uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'll be sending this around to folks, including uh, to yourself, if you're uh, if you're up for it, to look at it Absolutely. and see if you yeah, see if you might be up to adding your name to it. But um, I think that what we have succeeded in doing to date is building really sort of a, I mean, Braver Angels. It's an organization, but it's better thought of as kind of just sort of a, a civic community, if you will. Mm. That's distributed across the country. And so, you know, we've got about 11,000, uh, over 11,000 uh, dues paying uh, or dues paid members across okay. the country. We've got about 50 local Brave Angels alliances, which you can think of as local chapters. We have presences on college campuses and so forth, uh, you know, but I mean, our programs and our and our social media reach and, you know, just our larger breadth of interaction, you know, uh, would sweep in, uh, you know, tens of thousands, uh, more Americans, you know, the grand scheme of things, it's not, these aren't huge numbers, but the thing to realize is that these are communities built up of people from across all of the different divisions that you've mentioned. Um, Mm -hmm. we're not diverse in a way that perfectly reflects the diversity uh, of America, but we are growing in that direction and beyond just sort of like in a static way, having, you know, members and program participants who check these different identity boxes. The thing is, is that they're having the deep conversations and interactions over the sort of, you know, the, over the, the, the true sort of weightiness of their differences and experience and outlook, um, and just sort of lived reality, um, that prove so incredibly difficult to navigate, for the country as a whole. We're actually showing that these differences can be engaged and even transcended productively within the context of this community that we're building at Braver Angels. And the direction in which we are moving is leveraging these connections into on the ground collaborations that helps us that help us, you know, work on issues of concern, certainly in local communities and in national politics, but that also will help us to keep the peace. Um, you know, in in a literal kind of way, given the very literal, (laughs) Uh, in the aftermath of the election. I mean, we're, you know, we're developing kind of organizing uh, models uh, for Americans to come together and do precisely that in response to that possible outcome. Sure. So, um, you know, I think that I am extremely, um, you know, uh, proud of the work and honored to be doing this alongside our colleagues. And I think that Brave Angels work exists in the context of a larger movement that is seeking to form, you know, uh, because there are other organizations pushing in this direction. You've got other folks, including just commentators in the YouTube space and even on Twitter and so forth, people who sure. are not perfect individuals, but they are trying to to acknowledge the dignity and the human experience across the social and political spectrum and trying to create space for genuine understanding and and possible collaboration to take mm-hmm. place. I think that these force these forces are starting to come together and um what I 
to try and speak prophetically here a bit, I think that what's going to take the American people by surprise over the course of the next, uh, you know, maybe several months or so is the fact that I think that you will see sort of a a movement spring forth from, let's call it the civil society center, if you will, mm-hmm. that casts kind of a wide net in terms of the personalities and organizations and populations that that brings that it brings into it that isn't so much you know primarily focused on a progressive or conservative policy agenda so much as it is focused on rebuilding the fundamentals of community that al- would allow us to have a thriving democratic society in the first place and sure. i think that as that is accomplished you know you'll start to see um, a new alignment of, uh, of of forces in american life in a way that hopefully points the way forward to uh to that beloved community that I think most of us want to see. Sure. Sure. Um, before I let you go, one last thing. Um, what keeps you, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you inspired and hopeful? Mm. Well, a few things, my family, certainly, you know, the desire to see my, uh, children inherit, uh, a country and certainly a, a quality of life that, you know, is, um, that that lives up to my to my hopes for them um my friends uh i'm blessed to work with people who i um who i love and who i cherish i mean karen o'connor and april lawson uh, uh my brother Derek Steele and uh, mm-hmm. bob woodson david blankenhorn and just folks from across a wide spectrum of of you know experiences who i have the opportunity and the blessed and the privilege really to be able to operate alongside. Um, but I guess more than anything, it's just the belief that, I mean, I'm a person of faith and I, I, I do believe that we are here for a reason. I tend to look at things teleologically and I just, I just operate on the supposition that I have a uh, purpose that corresponds to the nature God has given me to play a certain role in the world, you know? And, uh, I just sort of look at my time here as the, as the kind of act of, of living that out, um, whatever it ultimately proves to be. And so I'm always sort of looking to looking, looking towards the, the looking down the road, I guess, and Mm -hmm. kind of thinking about what it'll be like to sort of get to that moment when there's more time behind me than in front of me. And I can take stock of everything in the rear view mirror. And hopefully when I get to that point, I'll be able to do so with a smile on my face. Um, I, I think you're, I think you're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, I know, um, you have to go. Um, but I, I just want to say, I, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to sit with me. You know, I've, these questions I've wanted to ask you for, um, for quite a bit now, ever since we, you know, were first put in contact some, you know, some time ago. Um, so again, really appreciate you. This has been, uh, incredibly informative and, um, yeah, I'd love to have you back. Yeah, brother. Will do. Anytime. All right. Appreciate you. Take care. Man.